Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he says, a uh, verse of Surah Yunus, Yunus, right, which is verse 57, 58. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًى وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ O oh people, a teaching from your Lord has come to you. A teaching or advice has come to you from your Lord, a healing for what is in your hearts and guidance and mercy for the believers. Say in Allah's mercy and in Allah's virtue and mercy, let them rejoice. These are better than all they accumulate. May Allah give us the reality of that. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإنه لتنزيل رب العالمين نزل به الروح الأمين على قلبك لتكون من المنثرين Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here that truly this Qur'an has been sent down by the Lord of the worlds. The trustworthy spirit brought it down to your heart. He's talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi So that you would be one of the warners. This is from Surah Al-Shu'ara, verse 192 to 194. Uh, what we want to look at today is one of the, uh, the introduction and the uh, first chapter of uh, Sheikh Mahmoud Khalil al-Husari's uh, Ma'al Qur'an al-Kareem with the Noble Qur'an. So uh, the, the author starts off by saying that all praise is due to Allah, the one who revealed the Qur'an and takes care of the righteous. Peace and blessings upon our, mes- uh, our master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the best of prophets, the elect of the messengers, and to whom was revealed the verse which I just recited, which is, وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنْزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِكَ لِتَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُنْذِرِينَ بِلِسَانٍ عَرَبِيٍّ مُبِينَ Truly, it is a revelation from the Lord of the worlds that trustworthy spirit brought it down upon your heart so that you could bring warning in a clear Arabic tongue. Right. And upon his family and companions, the adherents and guardians of the Qur'an and upon all those who take their path in defense of the Qur'an and protection of its purity. Right. Now, he, the author, he actually starts off with this little complaint or reflection or lament. You can call it whatever you want. He says that when reciting the Noble Qur'an, I have observed that some contemporary reciters have lost sight of its true purpose. Now, you know that Egypt has been at the forefront, at least in the last uh, several decades, probably a century, right? I mean, I can only speak about from the 1980s, from when I have observed that the Egyptian Qurra have been the top Qaris of the world, right? So it's Egypt that has, mashallah, exported Qira'a around the world. And of course, there's now other places, there's Syria, there's the Indian subcontinent. I mean, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. Uh, you know, there's other places as well where, mashallah, good Qira'a is coming from. However, Egypt has been traditionally the place. I mean, before 100 years ago, I don't know, right? That's too long for me to have looked into that. But however, since the last 100 years, right, the 19, 1900s, definitely Egypt. And they've had a lot of Qira'a. So now among them, Sheikh Mahmoud Khalil al husari He's complaining because whenever you have so much of anything in a place, then clearly there's going to be some people who may exaggerate. There's going to be some people who may take things beyond their bound and there's going to be people with shortcoming. So this is what he says. He says that uh, with, when reciting Noble Quran, I've observed that some contemporary reciters have lost sight of its true purpose, deviating from its correct method, and they abandon its proper practice. They recite its verses according to their whims, without regard to its even proper order, thereby severing that which Allah has connected. Meaning, when Allah has brought verses together, these people will, you know, separate them and read a bit from here, read a bit from there. That's what he's saying. In a single gathering, now this is a bit more technical, he says, in one gathering, in one session, they repeat a verse according to its variant qira'ah, recitations, qira'at and recitations and riwayat, recensions. 
right? An innovation that has no precedence among the righteous predecessors of the Ummah. He's got a whole chapter on discussing whether it's permissible or not. But what he means is that, you know, you have the seven to ten qiraat and more. So he's saying that when you're reading in one session, you should actually complete a whole reading, complete your reading in just one qiraat. You should not be mixing them up in the one session where you read one verse in its multiple forms, then you read the next verse in its multiple forms. Later on, he discusses it. He said that, you you should only the scholars have only allowed this when you're reciting to a teacher just to facilitate quicker reading so that you can complete the whole quran in its multiple recitations but in order to wow people you can't do that because it says that the focus is wrong there you're gonna just have people just admiring the various recitations without really focusing on the meaning i think that's kind of the crux of what he's saying he says i've written this book uh ma'al quran al karim as a sincere service for the Book of Allah Most High to clarify the correct method of its recitation and to defend the most sanctified thing that Muslims take honor in, which is the Quran. May Allah make that like that for us and to advise the vast majority of reciters and listeners. And uh, believe me, I mean, you know, I when I read this book, I was extremely inspired. And that's why we've taken it for publication. And that's why we're pub we've published it. Right. And inshallah, you'll be inspired as well. He said, I've uh, included some other topics in this book to make its utility more holistic and greater in scope, hoping to serve the book of Allah and seeking the beautiful reward and abundant gifts that Allah has in store for the people of the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this book from him. Um, we move into the first chapter. Uh, the first chapter, I'll kind of, you know, like summarize it for you, uh, what he speaks about, because it's very important. And the first chapter is actually about the superiority of the Quran over other revealed scriptures. Now, I guess we already know that, but he's going to discuss a few things regarding this. He says that uh, the Noble Quran is the wise book of Allah, his manifested light, his straight path, his greatest sign, his greatest guidance, the miracle of all, the miracle of all time, the book of eternity, and the constitution of the universe. He calls it the constitution of the universe, meaning everything relevant about the universe is contained in the book for us as guidance. Allah revealed it uh, to Prophet ﷺ to deliver mankind from darkness to light and guide them uh, to the path of the mighty and the praiseworthy. Right? It is a book that offers guidance on true beliefs, numerous etiquette, exemplary character and righteous works. By observing its injunctions, adhering to its guidelines, and embodying its teachings, mankind is guaranteed its felicity in the present worldly life as well as in the life to come. He then says that the Quran is a, a healing cure. A lot of people have found cure in the Quran when they read the Quran. A lot of people, you're wondering, like, how do you do that? Well, read the Quran with meaning. We usually tell people at least read one page with meaning, reflect over at least one page a day with meaning, and you will see the benefits of this, right? So, la ilaha illallah, he says, it's a wholesome cure and a healing balm for human psychological illnesses, character ailments, and social problems. Reason for that is, a lot of the social psychological ailments that people have, it's because they're suffering a trauma, they're suffering setbacks, they're suffering some kind of grief, they're suffering some kind of sadness, there's worry that has beset them, there's concern that has overtaken them. There's a loss that they have suffered or something like that. And what the Quran tells you and it shows you because it's a historical record in a sense as well. It shows that this is part and parcel of the world. And then it tells us that the hereafter doesn't have any of this. If you do what's right and you deal with the matters and the Quran tells us how to deal with it and encourages, it tells us to be patient. It tells us to be steadfast. And what it does in that regard is that it gives us many, many, many anecdotes, many stories, many narratives about people in the past who, are, who suffered much more than us, who suffered much more than what we, you know, what we suffer, the little, prick, uh, the little pricks and thorns that we suffer, the little setbacks and issues and criticisms that we have. And then that just makes you much stronger because when humans hear others uh, f facing the same thing and then they see that they were given a great reward for that then it just makes life easier because our life is at least 50% psychology it's about perspective right it's really about perspective motivation and what we have and just to understand about other people and the nature of this world that's what the Quran does believe me you start reading it you will see that same benefit so it is a book 
that offers guidance on true beliefs, numerous etiquette, exemplary character, character, righteous works. And by observing its injunctions and adhering to its guidelines and embodying its teachings, mankind is guaranteed its felicity in the present worldly life as well as the life to come. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he says, a uh, verse of Surah Yunus, Yunus, right, which is verse 57, 58. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًى وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِّمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ O people, a teaching from your Lord has come to you. A teaching or advice has come to you from your Lord, a healing for what is in your hearts and guidance and mercy for the believers. Say in Allah's mercy and in Allah's virtue and mercy, let them rejoice. These are better than all they accumulate. May Allah give us the reality of that. If a person uh, holds fast to the Quran and makes it their intimate companion, how do you make it an intimate companion? You basically keep reading it. An intimate companion is somebody that you can refer back to. Somebody you can consult. Somebody you can speak to often. Somebody who's always present and ready for you. And that's the amazing thing of the Quran. The Quran is still a living book and a living miracle. A lot of the time people have questions and doubts and issues and, and uh, sadness. And they read the Quran and the Quran lays them lays their concerns to rest subhanallah right so anybody who recites the quran as is supposed to be recited and tries to understand its chapters and verses and its phrases and words uh, that person will be enveloped in guidance and a spiritual state will overcome him right and it will make that person a person of great intellect and sound opinion with piercing insight and sensitive and pure soul. And then you will be much more open to uh, embrace any good which is out there. You know, like, like right now, sometimes there's a good out there, but we don't feel like it because our hearts are rusty. Our hearts are filled with other things. And we, we will also refrain from evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Surah Al-Isra, verse 9, إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ الَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَبِيرًا Truly, this Quran guides to the straight path and gives the believers who do righteous deeds glad tidings of a great reward. Now, as I mentioned to you previously, that the jinn were moved by this and they declared it amazing. Right, so their hearts became so filled with love and uh, the majesty of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that they hastened to call their own people to uh, to 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 follow it. So we have in uh, Surah Al Jinn, the beginning of Surah Al Jinn, Allah says, "Qul uhiya ilayya annahu istama'a nafarum min al jinni, faqalu inna sami'na Qur'an ajaba yahdi ila al rushti fa'amanna bi." So, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا Say that, uh, this is talking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The main part of this is, فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا They said that we have heard a wondrous Qur'an which guides towards righteousness. So we believed in it. And we shall never set up partners uh, with our Lord, right? That's very interesting, right? We shall never set up partners with our Lord. The Quran also then says, um, regarding these jinn, they said, "Qalu ya qawmana inna sami'na kitaban unzila min ba'di Musa musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi yahdi ila al-haqqi wa ila tariqin mustaqim." يَا قَوْمَنَا أَجِيبُوا دَاعِيَ اللَّهِ وَآمِنُوا بِهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ ذُنُوبِكُمْ وَيُجِرْكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ أَلِيمٍ 
They, meaning the jinn, said, Our people, we have heard a book that was revealed after Musa. So it looks like they knew about Musa alayhi salam. They say, I mean, the uh, description of the jinn is that they have different religions. So they, have, they know this history. They know about the prophets, right? So they said that our people, when they heard the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam reciting that morning, they went back to their people and they said that we have heard a book that was revealed after Moses confirming the previous scriptures that guides to the truth and the straight path. Our people respond to the one who calls to Allah and believes in him. He will forgive you of your sins and protect you from a painful torment. That's in Surah Al-Ahqaf, verse, 40, uh, verse 30 to 31. Because of this nature of the Quran, the Quran has surpassed all the previously revealed scriptures and it's superior to them in status. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another verse, وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ And truly it is with us in the mother of the book. Truly exalted and authoritative. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking about the Quran in terms of uh, yeah, where it has eternally been. And then he also says, in Surah Ma'id, that was Surah Zukhruf, verse 4. Uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 48, Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ بِالْحَقِّ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَمُهَيْمِنًا عَلَيْهِ We sent to you the book with the truth, confirming the scriptures that came before it, and with final authority over them. That shows the superiority of the Qur'an, right? Now, um, how can a book be superior to other books when they've all been revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Isn't this just one word of Allah with another word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So the scholars have said that even though all the scriptures are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran is superior for three reasons. Right? Firstly, the number of chapters in the Quran is greater than the other scriptures. Right? Uh, there's an authentic narration that states that just Surah Al-Fatiha, the Surah Al-Hamd, and the ending of Surah Al-Baqarah, meaning Amin al rasul bima unzil ilayhi min rabbihul mu'minun, and the beginning, Alif Lam Mim, they were only revealed to our Prophet Sallallahu Those are very, very special verses that were only revealed to our Prophet Sallallahu They were not, not found in previous scriptures. It's reported that Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu said that the seven long chapters, which are called the Tiwal, right, are similar in length to the, the Torah. So the, the, the Torah to Musa alayhi salam is only equivalent to the first seven long chapters. Right? Then after that, you have the, the mi'een. The mi'een are the hundreds, right? The hundreds, which means those surahs that are, have about a hundred verses, they're similar to the evangel, which means the Injil, the book of Isa alayhi salam, right? The, referred to as the Bible now, right? And the Mathani verses are the Psalms, right? They're like the Psalms of Dawud alayhi salam. And the rest of the Quran is surplus to this. So the Quran actually includes more than the Torah the Zabur, the Psalms, and the Injil put together, and it also has more than that. That's very interesting. That's a hadith related by Imam Darimi. Then Imam Ahmad and Imam Tabarani have narrated that Prophet ﷺ said that I have been given the seven long chapters in place of the Torah, the hundreds, surahs with a hundred verses, in place of the Psalms, the Mathani in place of the Evangel, and I was favored with the Mufassal. That's Imam Ahmad's. Now, the seven long chapters refer to the chapters from Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Ali Imran, Nisa, etc., to Surah Al-Tawbah. And if we count Surah Al-Anfal and Tawbah as one, that's if we count Surah Al-Tawbah and um, Surah Al-Anfal as one single chapter, one, one surah, right? Because there's a difference of opinion as to whether that Surah Al-Tawbah is a separate chapter or not, okay? The hundreds, the mi'een, are those chapters that have approximately 100 verses, and the mathani refer to those chapters whose verses number less than 100. Right, so all of those are considered to be the mi'een, right? Now, there's a difference of opinion as to which chapter begins the section of the Qur'an referred to as the Mufassal. Now that I've uh, introduced this name to you, you're going to wonder what the Mufassal is. Now, the opinions there range from starting from Surah Al-Safat, that that's where the, that that's where the Mufassal are to start from. Some say Surah Al-Fath, others say Surah Al-Hujurat. That is the popular opinion, I think. And then others say Surah, Surah Al-Qaf, right? Surah Al-Qaf. Right? However, they are in uni unanimous agreement that the Mufassal section ends with the ending of the Qur'an. But within the Mufassal sections, you've got three sections. You've got the longer, the longer Mufassals. Mufassal means the detailed. 
right? Those surahs which have been detailed, right? The verses are detailed. So you've got the longer mufassals, which are the longer surahs. You've got the medium ones, and then you've got the qisar, the smaller ones like Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq and Al Hakum Al Takathur and Ida Zulzila and and so on and so forth. So it's definitely until the end of Quran where it starts from. Though there's a difference of opinion. Usually we, uh, you know, we, we usually we hear their opinion that it starts from Surah Al Hujurat, right? Secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so the second reason why the Qur'an is superior is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the Qur'an in Arabic. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech is beyond any language, letters, sounds, etc. However, when He revealed that to the people to, for them to understand, He revealed it in different languages. So the Qur'an is in clear Arabic, right? Every prophet clarified the message, right, to their people in the language of their people. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا بِلِسَانِ قَوْمِهِ لِيُبَيِّنَ لَهُمْ We have never sent a messenger who did not use his own people's language to make things clear for them. That's Surah Ibrahim verse 4. Right? Now, so if everything is sent in their own language, why Arabic being superior? The Arabic language is considered especially advantageous in clarifying things. Because Arabic is a very nuanced language. It has very, very particular and very detailed and sophisticated uh, rhetoric, right, which allows it to be very, very detailed. So that's why multiple narrators like Bayhaqi and Hakim and Tabarani, they narrate the hadith that love the Arabs for three things. Because I am an Arab, the Prophet is saying, the Quran is in Arabic and the speech of the people of paradise is in Arabic. This is a hadith related by Bayhaqi, Hakim and Tabarani, right? And the third reason to make the Quran superior is although the previous scriptures of Allah Most High were miraculous in so far as they imparted knowledge of the unseen and gave legal rulings, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has extended the miraculous nature of the Quran, right, to include its pronunciation and linguistic style. So the Quran is not just miracle in its message, in the way it foretells things and the way it details things, but also in the way you read it, in its rhetoric, in its linguistic style. It's totally, it's totally irrefutable in all of these ways, right? The other scriptures do not enjoy the extraordinary style of the Qur'an, right? They just don't have that kind of style, right? It is for these and other such reasons that the Qur'an is superior, right? And this is what's referred to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَإِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيٌّ حَكِيمٌ And truly it is with us in the mother of the book, truly exalted and authoritative, now this is also indicated in another verse. Now you've heard this verse, it's Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas You are the best nation brought forth for mankind. Surah Ali Imran verse 110, right? Now how's that relevant to this, right? So Imam Ibn Kathir, right? He says that they, the mu'mineen, uh, we, only attain this accolade through the blessings of the esteemed book because we have this esteemed book. Allah Most High has honored the Quran over every other book that he revealed and he has given it authority over them, abrogating them by it, right? And made it his final revelation. Every previous scripture was revealed all at once, whereas this Quran was revealed incrementally according to the given situation, right? And this was done out of great concern for, for, for it, right? As for the one to whom it was revealed, so that it was revealed slowly, 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 so it could be digested better incorporated better, understood better. Imagine if it all came at once, you know, it'd take you a while to understand. But this way, subhanAllah, bit by bit and very strategic portions would come down until the whole Qur'an came down. It didn't come down, it, was, it did not come down the way we have it today in the, in the mushafs, the, the, you know, the, the way it's been put together, right? Every time a part of it was revealed, it was as if a book from the previous books was revealed. That's what Ibn Kathir says, right? So, there you go. I think... That gives us an understanding of the superiority of the Qur'an, the great book that we have. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially in Ramadan, right? May Allah make this um, a very special thing that we do in Ramadan is that we need to be more closely associated. And may Allah allow this to be a, an inspiration for us to be closer to this book throughout our life. And may Allah bless the author uh, for producing this book and for reminding us of these things. So inshallah, uh, we will see you again. Uh, in uh, the next, uh, inshallah, in the next episode, inshallah, in the next class of this. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
the point of a lecture is to encourage people to act, to get further, an inspiration, an encouragement, persuasion. The next step is to actually start learning seriously, to read books, to take on a subject of Islam and to understand all the subjects of Islam, at least at their basic level, so that we can become more aware of what our deen wants from us. Uh, and that's why we started uh, Rayyan courses, so that uh, you can actually take organized lectures uh, on demand whenever you have free time, especially, for example, the Islamic Essentials uh, course that we have on there, the Islamic Essentials Certificate, which you take 20 short modules. And at the end of that, inshallah, you will have gotten the, the basics of uh, most of the most important topics in Islam and you'll feel a lot more confident. You don't have to leave lectures behind, you can continue to, leave, uh, you know, to listen to lectures, but you need to have this more sustained study as well. Jazakallah khair and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.